recruiting new distributors is really the lifeblood of your business for a number of different reasons, right? Whether it's to uh, hit a new rank personally, uh, whether it's just to be in a good example to your teammates of what they should be doing, um, or whether it's to uh, you know take advantage of the phrase that new people solve old problems, right? You've got drama, you've got things happening in your organization, and you just need to go and uh, get some new fire, get some new blood in your business. The problem is that recruiting takes a lot of time, at least it can take a lot of time, and there's lots of different trainings and things out there that you can take um, that will teach you about how to recruit. Um, However, what you'll find out is that most trainings are really just different ways of doing the same thing, chasing prospects and doing so one at a time. Jimmy J's here, and this is what uh, I've created and called the recruiting quadrant. And when you're recruiting, there's really four uh, different quadrants, right? And the first axis is uh, that when you're recruiting, you're either doing so one-to-one or you're doing so one-to-many, meaning that you're either trying to recruit people or prospect people one at a time uh, or you're recruiting in bunches. The other axis is that you're either taking what I call the chasing positioning or you're taking what I call the trusted authority positioning, meaning that either prospects are chasing you or you're chasing prospects. There's no other way that it can be. Uh, In the bottom right, the chasing one at a time, we've got the grind. Chasing one to many is called vendor. Uh, One to one authority is called busy professional. And one to many authority is called the star quadrant. And as I mentioned earlier, there's lots of different trainings out there about how to recruit, but almost all of them fit into the grind quadrant, chasing prospects and doing so at a one-on-one basis. Things like Facebook messaging strangers, things like buying leads, things like the three-foot rule where you're talking to you know the person who sits beside you uh, on an airplane or the person behind you at the grocery store, right? And I've nicknamed this the desperation quadrant because prospects look at you and they treat you like you're desperate, right? They're they're like looking at you like you're chasing them um, and following up endlessly, all right? The next quadrant is called the vendor quadrant. And this is where you're getting some leverage. So you're still taking that chasing positioning, but instead of getting in front of one person at a time, you're getting in front of groups. So maybe you're uh, posting in Facebook groups and you're spamming groups rather than individuals. Still not recommended, but at least you're getting some leverage. Uh, Maybe you're going to networking events and attending some events where you can get in front of groups of people. Uh, Maybe you're going to trade shows, right? You're buying a booth and you're getting in front of more prospects in one weekend than most network marketers get in front of an entire year. So you're getting a lot more leverage. You're getting of a lot more people, but it's still that chasing positioning. People still look at you like you're just another salesperson. All right. The next one is busy professional. And this is where you get that authority positioning. People look to you as a trusted authority, um, but it's back to that one-on-one positioning. So be like a great referral. Right? You're not chasing them, they're chasing you. Uh, if you're in a health business, imagine getting a text message that said, uh, hey, you know, Joanne told me that you helped her lose 20 pounds. Can you help me too? Or, uh, hey, Billy showed me that uh, you helped him invest some money and uh, he's, you know, paying less in interest now um, and he's, he's, uh, you know, getting a better return on investment. Can you show me what uh, he's doing? So they're chasing you. Uh, If you go to a BNI group, as an example, uh, that might be a place to exchange and get great referrals uh, like that one. Uh, If you do a three-way call, if you're the upline and you do a three-way call and somebody in your downline, um, you know, calls you up and they connect you to a prospect, um, if that downline does the a correct job of edifying you and building you up properly, right? You're going to have that authority positioning, right? You're going to be um, looked to as the prospect, you know, is looking up to you. They're excited to hear from you, right? You're going to have a way higher closing rate. You're going to get treated with the respect that you deserve, okay? So that's the authority that I'm talking about. The downside is you're back down to one-to-one. Um, in fact, in, in three-way call, you're actually getting negative leverage, right? It's two business owners for every one prospect. So uh, it's called the important but not free quadrant um, because, you know, you can make a great income and you feel great, um, but because everything's one at a time, you're really not getting leverage. And because of that, it takes up a lot of time. The next one is called the star quarter, and this is really the gold standard of where you want to be. An example would be as if you wrote a best-selling book, right? As soon as you become a best-selling author, you've got thousands of people reading your book all at once, 
and um, you know, they're coming to you. You're not going to them. They're looking to you as an authority. The moment that book becomes a bestseller, you are an instant authority. Uh, if you know how to do Facebook ads properly, a lot of people don't do them properly, but if you learn how to do this properly, you can add a lot of value and you can have that authority positioning and you can get in front of groups of people all at once. Uh, if you were at an event and you were speaking on stage or if it was your event, um, same thing, right? You're talking to uh, groups of people all at once and, um, you know, you've got that authority positioning. Uh, if you've read some of my other blog posts, you know, uh, being a meetup organizer is one of my favorite ways to get into the star quarter. And again, you've got groups of people and they're looking to you as the leader. So um, this is what I call the star quadrant and it's nicknamed the mass influence quadrant because it's where you get massive amounts of influence. You get a big following um, and it's really um, marketing, right? If you can do this right, some people call it attraction marketing, okay? So it's really the gold standard of where you want to be. Um, lots of times in the past, it's been hard to duplicate um, the star quadrant, which is why it isn't taught very often. But if you want to really... Um, you know, increase the number of people that you get in front of, increase uh, the amount of leverage that you have and the amount of authority that you have, you want to start looking at different ways where you can get into the star quadrant. And a lot of the people um, who, you know, have big followings, um, you know, they're using the star quadrant and they're teaching the grind quadrant, right? They're writing best-selling books. They're speaking on stage. They're doing Facebook ads. Uh, but what they're teaching is how to, you know, talk to the person behind you at the grocery store, okay? So watch what people do rather than listening to what they say. And if you do that, I think you'll realize being in the star quadrant is exactly where you want to be. So, uh, underneath this video, I'd love it if you want to just let me know which quadrant you spend the mo most of your time in right now. Um, and if you are in the star quadrant, um, let me know what activities uh, that you do that give you authority and leverage, right? That get you in front of groups of people and that position you as an authority. So uh, thanks a lot and uh, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you.